In collegiate gymnastics, this is just about as good as it gets. And we have just waited for this head-to-head -head battle. Oklahoma is on fire. They are defined by perfection, precision, and consistency. I think now we're seeing them at their absolute best. UCLA has some incredible gymnasts, including world and Olympic medalists. What a thrilling meet we have in store tonight. It's a gorgeous day in sunny Southern California, and we're inside Pauley Pavilion for one of the best matchups of the year in dual meet gymnastics. Number one, Oklahoma, visiting the UCLA Bruins here in Los Angeles. You talk about two great teams. These two teams together have won a total of nine NCAA team titles. Oklahoma has won three of the last four years, and UCLA has won six titles, their last coming back in 2010. Hi, everybody. I'm Bart Connor, along with my fellow Olympic medalist, Kathy Johnson-Clark. We are so excited about today's meet because we have these two amazing teams. First of all, Oklahoma had an undefeated season last year that ended in the national championship, and UCLA is always a contender, plus they're just plain fun to watch. And, Bart, you and I have <laughs> covered some amazing matchups so far this season, but all along we have penciled this meet in as potentially a can't-miss meet. And now, since UCLA had a huge win over number 2 LSU last week, Oklahoma, even though they lost some super seniors, mm -hmm. they have not missed a beat. They are consistently outscoring every team in the nation. The stars may have a line to make this a truly spectacular meet. Now, you mentioned the stars, and we have them this afternoon. Maggie Nichols from Oklahoma, 2015 World Championship team member, and Madison Koshin and Kyla Ross at UCLA, both Olympic gold medalists. That's the first time a collegiate program has had two Olympic gold medalists competing in college gymnastics. So this is about as good as it gets, and I'm glad you've joined us. The Super Bowl is later today, but this is Super Beam Sunday on ESPN. And welcome back inside a rockin' Pauley Pavilion. Let's go down to the third member of our broadcast team. Today, it's Holly Rowe. Well, thank you so much. Today, you will see an all-around competition that just might be a preview of the national championship all-around competition come April. For Oklahoma, Maggie Nichols took the collegiate gymnastics world by storm last season. In her freshman year, she had seven perfect tens. And to think, she wasn't even 100% healthy. Now, after knee surgery, she's back and better than ever. Today, for UCLA, you'll also see Kyla Ross, the only woman in history to be an Olympic, world, and NCAA champion. She had four perfect tens last year. This should be unbelievable. All right, folks. Action underway here at UCLA. <laughs> The home team starts on the vault. The visiting team starts on the bars. And that was a heck of a start. Caitlin Ohashi on the vault for UCLA. Open with the high. Yurchenko full. Well done. She is the highest ranked member of the UCLA team nationally on vault. Caitlin Ohashi ranked 13. Excited to see her on some of the later events today as well. For the Oklahoma Sooners, they open up as the visiting team on bars, and that brings up senior A.J. Jackson. Who loves this first position on the uneven bars, leading the team off with a short and sweet routine, trying to hit all those handstands. Remember, the judges sit right on the side, and they want all those handstands right in that vertical position. The landings are gonna be crucial. Here, every tenth of a point's gonna count. She gave up just a little bit on that landing. Oklahoma last year at the national championship stuck all of their landings on bars, which led them to part of the reason why they won that victory. Now, technically, this isn't a deduction, but I'm telling you, the judges are really deducting if they're not right on top in that vertical position in the handstands, a full out, and just a little half hop. Caitlin Ohashi. This is Pauline Trutz from Germany, the freshman. Now, ideally, all of the gymnasts are working toward competing a 10-0 start value vault. This is actually a 9-5 nine, nine start value. Yurchenko full. Look at the distance on that vault. The judges are going to love that. They are also looking for good height. 
and the distance away from the horse, and of course, that all-important landing. She's the two-time German national champion on vault. She's a freshman here at UCLA. I'm interested to see how far she flew. Look at this. Nine feet away from the table. That's huge. She, of course, coming up after Caitlin Ohashi, who had a 9-7-7-5 for the Bruins in that first performance. A.J. Jackson for Oklahoma on the bars, started them off with a 9-8. This is an exciting freshman as well. This is Anastasia Webb from Morton Grove, Illinois. I know that because that's my hometown. She went to the same high school I did a few years later, Kathy. And we have been so impressed with this gymnast as a freshman, so calm and collected in competition. Ranked seventh right now in the all around little hop there on that landing. But the routine was really well done. Very impressed that she's such a cool character just in starting her collegiate experience. She had some beautiful release moves within the routine. Here's the dismount, double front. Not easy to stick. She'll give up just a tiny deduction on that landing. KJ Kindler, the head coach for the Oklahoma Sooners in her 12th season, congratulating her. Now, Nia Dennis, also from the Chicagoland area. She's a freshman. And this is a gymnast packed with speed and power. If she can time the block off the table. <laughs> Gorgeous landing. Absolutely perfect on the landing. Pauline Tratz, by the way, had a 9.85 before her. That is going to boost their score here. Very nicely done in the air. Good position. And no movement of the feet. One knock against the UCLA Bruins over the last several years is not really in the early part of the season being able to put those landings down on vault. It's impressive so far. For the Sooners now, Stephanie Couture coming after Anastasia Webb's 9-8. Beautiful release move. Some of the gymnasts do the single bar release move. Others do the transition to the low bar, like this bail to handstand. She's a senior out of Phoenix, Arizona. The judges are looking for perfect form as well. Tight legs, pointed toes. And of course, the position in the dismount. Perfect in the laid out position and an excellent landing. Check out the height, single bar release. She releases and almost two and a half feet above the bar, makes the regress perfect distance from the bar. But this was the highlight, double layout, boom, nailed it. And the score is in for Vault. Nia Dennis, the freshman, a 9925. And that brings up world and Olympic champion, Kyla Ross. Kyla combines everything you need to see in gymnastics. Style, finesse, power. Oh, great vault in the air. A little hop on the landing. They're going to have to deduct there. But it was actually a better vault in the air. She has such nice technique and straight, tight body line. Just a little half hop backwards. I like how square she is when she comes off the vault table and sets up just a clean full exactly. twist. Exactly. She waits. She's got the patience to lift up off the table before she twists. The Pac-12 Gymnast of the Year last year. Granadalno, the junior from Odessa, Missouri, also a world champion medalist for the U.S. team, and she was competing with her club. Now she is a junior for the Sooners. Watch the power you will see this gymnast perform with on the uneven bars. Huge release move. I love her straight arm work. Every kick pass to handstand, perfectly straight arm. She's coming up after Stephanie Couture got a 9-8-7-5. Little loss of tilt point there, but that is being picky. Huge swing into the double layout and uncanny in her ability to find those landings. Lou Ball gives her congratulations. Lou, the assistant coach at OU. Very nice height and distance. She just has remarkable technique everywhere, doesn't she? She does, and that pays off because she can just dial it in every time. <laughs> she landed with a smile on her face. Renadal, the junior from Odessa, Missouri. Back to the vault now. Poor Hall coming after Kyla Ross scores in a 9-9. Now we're going to get our first look at a one and a half twist. This is a 10 start value. Oh. Nailed it. Wow, what a vault. 
first of all, more difficult. It is a one and a half twist. That's why she's landing facing away from the table. But she dialed this landing in. Tiny little bit of form in the air, but the judges are going to love that landing. It's her second week in a row she stuck this vault. That is a shot in the arm for UCLA. The senior from Kansas City, Missouri, delivering here in the first rotation. The energy in this building right now is going to fuel both these athletes. That's when it's so exciting, going head to head, back and forth. Brenda Dahl's score is in. It's a 9-9. The final two performers on bars for the Sooners both earned a share of the six-way tie for last year's national championship on the event. This is junior Nicole Lehrman from Austin, Texas. Now watch her release move. It's different than we've seen all evening. She's going to do a half pirouette right here and into a Jaeger front. Huge height. Scored just in for Poole Hall and 995 for the Bruins over on Vault. Look how perfectly pointed her toes are. She squeezes the ankles together. Shows off the handstand position. Let's see if she can get the landing. Half in, half out. There you go. Now they're finding these landings. This is so cool. Watch a half pirouette on top of the bar. Sets up the forward swing into a front somersault, straddles. Picture perfect. Such beautiful execution. And watch this, you can really see that half in, half out, spots the landing and gets it. The Sooners look really comfortable in the difficulty that they do. They seem to do everything with a sense of perfection. Felicia Hano now, the sophomore from San Gabriel, California, will wrap it up. She's coming after Pua Hall's career high 995. And doing the same vault, one and a half twist. Oh! A little more distance on that vault, but she couldn't quite get the landing. She hopped forward. She had the flu last week. I know that's going around the country, so good to see her back at full strength. Now, remember, I told you the judges are looking for both. Height. Let's check out the height above the table. Five feet at the hips. And the distance, this was really big for her. Eight, eight and a half feet, almost nine feet. Of course, the hop took her out, out over 11. They'll have to deduct there. Maggie Nichols will be set to go for the Sooners on bars. The score is in for Nicole Lehrman. It's a 9.95. Oh, and sets up this routine by Maggie Nichols. Gorgeous. That is one of the hardest release moves in gymnastics. She does it in a pike position. Then does another release move down to the low by the Pat Salto. You see the scores for the Sooners there on the right. They have climbed Maggie up perfectly for a super gigantic score. And she has a way of finding these landings when she needs them. Oh! And there it is. Remember, it was a 9.95 <laughs> for Lehrman. Wow. Well, check this out. She does a toe on handstand. First, she hits that beautiful handstand. Picture perfect. Keeps her legs together in a pike position. Look at the toe point. Two and a half feet above the bar. Perfect distance away on the regress. And then difficulty back up to the high bar. Just absolute near perfection. From the judge's perspective, they are going to see it as really close. What a start here in the first of four rotations at Pauley Pavilion. UCLA, a season high in the vault, and Maggie Nichols comes in with a 995. We'll be back to update. I spoke to said we want our friends and sisters to know that we support them that moving forward we will be an army of sisters together helping them get through this and making an affecting change in this sport. Bart? We've all heard about the multitude of issues around elite gymnastics and some of the adults that fail to protect them effectively. This however is about the power these beautiful talented women took back and are rebuilding the sport they love together. And we'll be right back to UCLA after this. It's a tight one, 25 thousandths of a point. Separate these two outstanding teams. Fights.
Welcome back to Poly Pavilion. UCLA with a slight lead over Oklahoma at the start of rotation number two. Well, being here in Poly Pavilion brings back some very special memories. It was right here in the same building back in 1984 that the Los Angeles Olympics spawned some very special stars. In 1984, one Bart Connor got a very special start to his gymnastics career with team gold and the parallel bars gold medal. I remember that because I was a senior in high school and I was in love with him ever since. And then Kathy Johnson, she was America's sweetheart, a team silver medal, beam bronze medal, and she has been one of the great advocates for women's gymnastics ever since. A very special welcome home to our two colleagues in Polly Pavilion. Uh, how sweet, Holly. Thank you so much. It's hard to believe that was only 34 years ago, Kathy. Only? <laughs> <laughs> we, we both experienced some life-changing moments in this very building, so it's a thrill to be here with you. And it's a thrill to be celebrating what's amazing happening in college gymnastics these days. So we go to the next rotation. Oklahoma on vault. This is Bree Showers. And I just watched their final touch warm-up. They look unbelievable on this event. This is an event where they could take an advantage. They open with their Yurchenko fall. Very nicely done, but they will perform four out of their six vaults, 10-0 start values, so that is an advantage. UCLA had two of their six vaults that were 10-0 start values at this point in the season. Everyone's tried to measuring what's the vault that they can get the highest score on and do it consistently. There's the bars lineup for UCLA, Janae Honest the senior from Vesalia, California. And Janae became a mainstay on this event last year. She was the co-champion at the Pac-12 two years ago. Look at the height on that release move. Huge amplitude. She has worked so hard perfecting this routine to have such an impact for her team. Little bit of form on that last cast of handstand. Really got to lock those legs out and point the toes. Half in, half out. <laughs> Excellent landing. Great start for UCLA. She get high five from Chris Waller in his 16th year here at UCLA. He's responsible for their work on bars. This is big air. Two and a half feet over the bar. Super job by this young lady. Tiny little form airs in there, but boy, she left a great last impression there. And here's a young lady that walked on as a freshman and ended up becoming Pac-12 co-champ on the bars. What a success story for Janae Honest from the LA area. Three shower scores in 985. That brings up Nicole Lehrman. Who's also doing a big Yurchenko full. So clean in the air. I love the form. Straight body, legs together, very tight, and toes pointed. All of these little details, the judges have to take it all in rapid fire. They don't have the advantage like we do of looking at it in slow motion. Nicole Lehrman is one of those gymnasts that when you see her in slow motion, it's even hard to point out very many mistakes. Her polish is exceptional. Back to the bars now, Nia Dennis. Janae Honest had a 9.825. Nice transition from low bar to high bar. That's one of the requirements on the uneven bars. They have to move back and forth twice throughout the routine from high to low and back up. Good solid routine. Nice double lock. And she fought and finessed. Almost got that stick on the landing. 2017 Junior Olympic All-Around Champion. Just a freshman here. Now watch her fight so hard to glue those toes to the mat. Just a quick salute to the judge. I think they'll get her just a little bit. Brenna Dowell. You saw her work on the bars where she nailed that landing. Look at her vault average, over 9.917. She's fifth in the NCAA there. And such power and a great quick twist. I was gonna say she is like a cat. Twisting and finding the ground, always landing on her feet, and then no movement. She is None. unreal on her landing. Yes. We've seen it time and time again. Yes, yeah, some, some people just have this ability. It's like an inner gyroscope. <laughs> Turn, twist, and somehow just no movement, nothing. She, she's coming the after the 9-9 for Nicole Lehrman, so KJ Kindler gives her a wow. <laughs> Sooners have a 9-8-5 and a 9-9 so far. We go back to the bars. Oh, the score's in for the Sooners. It's a 10 for Brenna Dowell at an away meet. How about that? Absolutely.
absolutely. I couldn't find any deductions. How about you? Nicely done. Back to the bars now. Sonia Mirage. And this routine very well because that was a loud applause after the final vault there before her. Oh no, a step back. Anytime you take that big step back, that's going to be a full tenth of a point deduction on the landing. All right, let's remind people how the rules are set up in collegiate dual meet competition. Six athletes compete for each team on each event. The best five scores count, so the lowest score is dropped on each event. After all four apparatus, the team with the highest cumulative score wins. The home team order starts with the ball. That brings up Anastasia Webb for the Sooners. Oh, oh no! Darn, and that, it was so neat to see a very different vault, unique vault. Oh, it's my goodness. called an only end check. And here's a young lady that's been remarkably consistent for the Sooners. Absolutely. She just didn't quite get a square block on the table. You really have to make that half turn crisp, clean, and complete so you can block through the shoulders and make this rotation. Five tenths of a point off for that fall. Mm, what a missed opportunity for the Sooners coming after Brenna Dowell's perfect 10. Caitlin Ohashi now, the junior for UCLA on bars. So exciting seeing Caitlin compete in the all-around. First time in her collegiate career as a senior. She's doing all four events. Really nice to, oh no! Back-to-back -back falls. Now, keep in mind, we just saw the rules. So, both of these teams can drop a low score. Okay, so that's not complete disaster. Let's see. She gets back into the routine. Because you've got to really, really. Oh. Oh. Now, just too far out. Just too far out. Five tenths of a point. But again, both these teams will want to drop oh. that score. Disappointment for Caitlin Ohashi. Yeah, that's unfortunate because she's been in and out of the lineup as a specialist sometimes. They're so excited to have her back in the all-around. Junior from Plano, Texas, did her club training at the World Olympic Gymnastic Academy. A missed opportunity for the Bruins there, for sure. But Bart, this is going to be a sign of truly great teams, how they respond. These next performances up, their role is get everyone back on track, they can turn it around on a dime. Anastasia has a 9-2-5, so that would be the score they'd like to drop. Here's this A.J. Jackson. can be huge. One and a half twist. Whoa! Almost undercooked that ball as well. I'm seeing a little nerves here. It's interesting. It was almost as if she was trying to stick that. It's the one thing you can't do. You can't get ahead of yourself in gymnastics and think about the landing too soon. She was slightly off center, which just tells me she was just slightly rushed, trying mm. to get to the stick too soon. With vaults like that, when you finish landing forward, you always want to think to land and step forward. And if you get lucky enough to have the stick, you take it. But it's so easy to end up on your rear end and take a major deduction. All right, we go back to the bars, and this could be one of the highlights of today's meet. Peng Peng Lee, who is just, what can you say, Kathy? <laughs> Ordinarily, you would see her super relaxed here and just, she's such a joyful gymnast and very spirited, but she knows right now this is crucial. This is a must-hit situation, and with that comes a different kind of pressure. But this is the type of gymnast who can do it and wait till you see this routine. Here's it, a young lady that is a double red shirt senior. This is her sixth year at UCLA because two knee injuries kept her out of competition and she was extended an extra red shirt year as a result. Check out the high flying release moves. They are spectacular, but she has to re-grasp the ball. Ohashi's score is just a 9075. There's the first one. Huge bar. Sometimes she connects those two. Oh, Look beautiful. at that. Absolutely gorgeous, pack full. That is as difficult as it gets on the uneven bars. She is truly on. Perfect positions in the handstand. What a rock star. Double layout. Woo! Oh! for that landing. What a clutch routine for Peng Peng Lee. Oh my 
goodness. Look at the height above the bar. Two and a half feet up. Perfect distance when she regressed the bar. An and impeccable this form. This next transition is gorgeous. Full twist. Down to the low bar. Flying high like she's in the circus. And <laughs> oh, fought for that landing. Expect a huge score for Peng Peng Lee. Let's go back to ball for the Sooners. AJ Jackson scores in a 9.85. Here is Maggie Nichols, the number one all arounder in the United States. 9-9 is the score for Peng Peng Lee for UCLA. And this will be the final performer now for the Sooners, Maggie Nichols. And Maggie has perfect technique and ice water in her veins. Oh! You'll see it right here. Look at that. <laughs> How about that? That is exactly what you come to expect from Maggie Nichols. She dials in all the training that she has gone through to perfect the technique. So under pressure, Look at the she form. delivers. Wow. Here's a young lady tied for first in the NCAA on this event. That is as close to perfect as possible. Remember, the Sooners already had a 10. Brenna Dowell got a 10. The Ross on the bars now. And what a gorgeous bar performer. Perfect technique, perfect form, elegant on this event, and she is trying to hit everything absolutely perfectly because she can. <laughs> the Bruins got what they needed, five hit routines. This is as exciting as it gets. Look at that handstand, almost overdid it. Just ever so slightly beyond that vertical, but this is exactly what you wanna see. And under pressure, she delivers a spectacular landing. Let's go down to Holly Rowe. She's with Coach KJ Kindler. Well, Coach, it's the second week in a row you've taken your team on the road in very difficult environment. Florida last week, now here at UCLA. What are you seeing from your kids as they perform in these very difficult environments? Yes, well, we thrive in this environment. We love to be with great audiences who appreciate gymnastics, so it's really fun for them. What I'm seeing is they're super strong mentally. They really can handle it. They're warriors, so I'm excited about that. I think we saw that mental strength there on the vault table is you got a 10 and then a miss. So how did they rebound and finish strong on the apparatus? Yeah, we haven't had a miss yet this season, so that's really tough for them to handle, and they have to stay calm, really. They have to keep it down and just do what they do every day. And I was glad to see them do that. And even Maggie going after that stick, being super aggressive, even under that pressure, awesome. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Fire it back to you. And in that second rotation, Maggie Nichols got a 9975 on vault. Kyler Ross, a 9925 on bar. OU with a season high on vault. They now lead by three tenths of a point, going to the third rotation. We're back here in Pauley Pavilion. A great meet today. Three tenths of a point separating these two teams, Oklahoma on top. There is Maggie Nichols, and we set up the stop of this competition, this Nichols and Ross rivalry. Look at how these two stars have delivered for their respective teams. What a journey for Maggie Nichols from elite international competition to collegiate competition. I just feel so honored to, you know, wear Oklahoma on my chest or on my back. It's just a great feeling, and, you know, I've dreamed of this, like, my whole life of coming here to Oklahoma and um, representing. It's just an amazing feeling. I feel like my past experience has helped me a lot just because um, I'm really good with like the pressure I feel like and um, being able to compete my best under high pressure situations. The training we do here at Oklahoma really makes me feel prepared and calm when I go out there so I just know I'm going to hit my routine and um, I just try to think like I do it in practice and I'll be okay. I just want to do everything to help my team you know win another national championship and it's just been awesome because we're doing it for each other and we just have grown so close so it's an amazing feeling. She is doing everything to help her team. Ranked number one in the nation in the all-around right now. And think about this, just coming back after micro-fracture knee surgery in the off-season. Right after the season last year, had that surgery and to go four weeks without weight-bearing on that knee. You would never know it to watch her. She is as flawless as she's ever been before. Really speaks to the work effort, effort that she took to get back to full form. She has a slight lead in the all-around today. Bart? 
Thank you, Holly. Yes, it's Super Beam Sunday here at Quality Pavilion in Los Angeles, and we have a great one. Stick around, folks. These two teams separated by just three tenths of a point. And we're back at Pauley Pavilion. We have a great meet today. Number one, Oklahoma, and number four, UCLA, in a close one. UCLA goes to the beam, and there's Peng Peng Lee. Last week, she scored a perfect 10, and she's had four in her entire career. Kathy, she's pretty spectacular. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't know what inner spirit she channels for balance beam, but it is truly special. There's something so joyous and so free about the way she works. Well, she has talents on many levels, as our Holly Rowe points out. Well, that's right. After she's done with her gymnastics career, she really wants to focus on being a singer. She wants to get into the entertainment world. She sang the national anthem before the meet today. Listen in. She is just incredible. She has been singing around town, saying before the men's basketball game on yesterday, and I have a feeling that whatever Peng Peng wants to do in her life, she is going to be a perfect 10 at everything she tries. <laughs> Thank you, Holly. That's true. That's one thing about Val Condos Field. She seems to embrace the uniqueness that each of these athletes bring to her program and she doesn't squelch it she in fact celebrates oh. it and allows them to bring it out doesn't she Kathy? she does remember when she walked over to us she goes i have no control over them and i said <laughs> you don't want to control this they have such an energy and each a unique personality it's wonderful condos field in her 28th year she's led the ucla bruins to six titles in the ncaa's and she got her 500th win last week in that quad meet, Metroplex Challenge down in Texas. Our next big Monday matchup presented by Joseph A. Banks is the Sonic Blockbuster. Number 15, West Virginia battles freshman sensation Trey Young and 12th ranked Oklahoma. Tomorrow at 9 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Kathy, as we know, most uh, clutch gymnastics meets come down to who can stay cool and calm on the beam, and that's where UCLA goes right now. Peng Peng had a 10 last week in the Metroplex Challenge. As I said, she is just such an, an extraordinary and special talent. She has so many different types of skills in her routine, and she does them with such a free spirit. It's just amazing to watch. All right, mounting the beam now in this third of four rotations is Brielle Nguyen. She is a balance beam specialist, transfer from University of Illinois. And all of UCLA's gymnasts refer to their coach as Miss Val. And I know Valerie really wanted to see some higher scores on bars, thought the judges were just a little stingy. I can say they weren't generous. So she wants to really knock it out of the park here on Balance Beam, and it's a great event for UCLA. Brielle grew up in Southern California and trained with several of the gymnasts competing here, Kyla, Savannah, and Alicia. And she went off to the University of Illinois, but decided she felt more comfortable being back here in Southern California. One thing Val works really hard with these gymnasts on is getting them to relax and perform balance beam. With a smile on their face, she feels that relaxes them. Studies have shown and proved that. So even if it doesn't come naturally at the beginning, they all learn it by the end. Great finish. Nice start for UCLA. UCLA is second ranked in the country on the beam. The Sooners are the number one team on beam. I think that's why they call this Super Beam Sunday. <laughs> Bree Showers, the sophomore for the Sooners. And you see their entire lineup, which finishes with Maggie Nichols. Fascinating story about Bree Showers. Last year, they found a benign tumor in her right forearm. And after she had it lasered out, she was back to training. Her arm snapped on a simple skill, a round off. And so they had to shut her down for an entire season last year. So it's great to have her back in the lineup for the Sooners. She's a sophomore, but in reality, this is really a freshman year for her, so to speak. 
and we are in a treat. In for a treat. These floor exercise routines are so well choreographed. Great music choice. Each of them tells their own story. Of course, Val Condos Field at UCLA is renowned for her choreography, but she did say to us the other day that she said, I love KJ Kindler's work. He's a big fan of what KJ is doing at Oklahoma. There's kind of a mutual respect society there because these are probably two of the more creative teams in terms of choreography. Judges are looking for those leaps to show full split in the air and the complete rotation in the turn. And ideally, complete control on these tumbling passes on the landing, watch if she lands on the two feet before stepping in to the dance move. Again, the judges are looking for perfect landing with the chest up high. That was well done and showing control on both feet before stepping into the lunge. Back to the beam now for UCLA. Brielle Nguyen had a 9-9. So you said that Val was in the judges' faces. So <laughs> uh, she said, we need a little higher scores here, apparently. A 9-9 for the leadoff performer for the Bruins here at home. And that brings up world and Olympic gold medalist Madison Koshin, who's only in one event tonight because she's recovering from a labrum surgery on her shoulder. And we spoke with Maddie before the competition. She says the therapy is doing great for her body. She's coming back strong. She's ahead of schedule. You say about five months ahead of schedule, in fact. Ooh, she was a little cautious going into that switch ring leap and the back leg, that foot, really lost its toe point. She managed to pull it back in line. Switch so lead to the sheep jump, one of the more difficult jumps in gymnastics not just in terms of what it's rated, but to make it look good in the air, to show that perfect form. One and a half years, just a little underdone on that dismount, so she had to step back. The winner of two Olympic medals, a team gold and an uneven bar of silver in Rio. This was her acrobatic series, the aerial walkover right into the back handspring. They have to perform that with no hesitation. Right here is the sheep jump, and they really want to see the toes come as close to that head as possible and maintain form throughout the entire jump. This was just a little under-rotated, so she had to take that step back, and of course, it's a little off-center. Back to the floor now for the Sooners. Bree Showers had a 9.825. Brenna Dowell up now, and boy, she has really one of the most thrilling first tumbling runs in collegiate gymnastics yeah. coming up now. Well, you remember her vault. She brings that same speed and power here, and this is phenomenal. Arabian double, or handspring double front. Look at that. Not an easy pass to one, keep in bounds, but to also land with control. Brenna is all about power, technique. Love the little cat leap jump out of the tumbling run. KJ does an excellent job picking the music for the athlete to really match their personality and the dynamics of their gymnastics. Pushing hard for the final pass. Front layout to front full. So super difficulty in that first tumbling pass and solid on both 
remaining tumbling passes, but this is just incredible. A double front. Very few gymnasts do this in college. She does it really well. Kept her toes pointed throughout. Woo, check out this view. I love it. I almost feel like I'm doing it. Very nice. Brenna Dahl, who did her freshman year and then went back to elite gymnastics and then came back to collegiate gymnastics. That's pretty rare in the NCAA. As we go back to the beam for UCLA, Grace Glenn had a 9-9 last week on beam at the Metroplex Challenge. Now, she missed all of last season because of a surgery on a torn labrum. Nice leap pass. One of the harder ones, switch leap right into another switch leap. I love hearing the support of her teammate. Oh no, gave up a little there. You often hear about a special connections that twins have. Her twin sister, Anna, is also on the team here. Last year, they both had the same surgery with this torn labrum, and they both got injured on the same skill. I wonder if they can both pull their leg up and hold their foot up over her head. Showed beautiful flexibility there, and a great dismount. Back handspring right into the gainer, fall off. Unfortunately, that will hop on the landing. Those little deductions are gonna add up. So Brielle Nguyen had a 9-9, Madison Koshin in 9-8-5. Very aggressive on the landing. But unfortunately, there is a balance check right here after the front aerial, just off to the side. You can see her center of gravity, her upper body just lean to the left. A couple of notes from Miss Val. Back to the floor for the Sooners. Brenda Dahl's score is in, it's a 9-9. This is freshman Evie Schofer. Bounce on that and out of bounds. Pretty big bounce. That'll be at least a tenth of a point and then another tenth of a point for going out of bounds. Much better on the middle pass. Let's go down to Holly Rowe. Well, keep in mind this Oklahoma team that are the defending national champs, they have 11 new routines out of 24, so almost half of their routines are new in the lineup. KJ Kindler told me that last week at Florida, a very raucous environment in that meet, she's like, I feel like we really grew up. You see freshmen that are out there right now, they're trying to get their balance and, and get this competition experience. She said, you know, we're very young, but I'm very happy with where we're at right now, given that they turned over their lineup so much. Good point, Holly. The Sooners lost to the Florida Gators last week down in Gainesville by 25,000 per point in a hotly contested and highly scored gymnastics meet. Boy, that routine just built from the first pass all the way through the last. Each one got better than the previous. So this is the biggest deduction in the routine. She hops back on two feet, a big hop and out of bounds. At least two tenths of a point right there. All right, we go to the beam now for UCLA. They have a 9-9, a 9-8-5, and a 9-7-5. But the final three beam performers for UCLA are unbelievable with Caitlin Ohashi, Kyla Ross, and Peng Peng Lee. This is Ohashi. I have waited all day to see these final three beam performers. They are something special. For two tens in 2017. Reverse full turn. Again, just something out of the ordinary. Front aerial, very smooth transition right to the back hands when she's extremely calm. Switch ring, oh good. Made that connection right into the beat jump. Gorgeous flexibility. Looking out to her fans in the audience. <laughs> Quite a following here in the Los Angeles area. They love their Bruins here. It's so great to see an NCAA gymnastics right into the dismount. Back hands from layout to a full. Well done. <laughs> well, 
Watch how smoothly she finesses this front aerial. The arm slightly wavered out to the side, but she controlled it so beautifully, brought it right back in line. And this is my favorite part. Back handspring layout, step out to a layout full. Gorgeous. Anastasia Webb, now let's see what she can do. We saw her sit down her ball. That was the first hiccup, not only for her as a freshman, but for the Oklahoma Sooners all season long. Let's see what she can do here. I know this is a routine you like. Kathy. I love it. Front double twist. I love the way she dances into her tumbling, dances out of it. Makes it a complete performance. Both KJ Kindler and Val Condos Field choreographed in such a way that they even work on the facial expression, where they're going to spot each time with the eyes. It's extremely effective. Oh, oh no! Another out of, out of bounds. Now, to meet this close, two out of bounds deductions. That means two tenths of a point that could have been avoided. And Ohashi score just came in on beam 9925. Remember, these teams were separated by just three tenths of a point. Coming into this rotation, the Sooners with the lead. What a wonderful performance. And though the step out of bounds didn't take anything away from that performance, it will take away from her score. Score for Evie Schofer before her at a 9-6-7-5 only. Front with a double twist. Good control on that landing. But unfortunately, I think it was because she was a little bit offline. If you go directly to that corner, you got a little bit more room. She's slightly off to the side and then crossed over and out of bounds. So after the 9925 for Ohashi, here is Kyla Ross. Well, prepare yourself for possible perfection here. Kyla Ross has such exquisite training, and she has a calm confidence about her because of that training that she can rely on. Last year, she scored perfect tens twice as a freshman. Watch Marquee. this leap. Beautiful in the air, extremely difficult, unfortunately. Oh, that's a balance break. They will take off for that. I love that she kept the smile on her face, though, stayed relaxed, didn't let it become bigger than it could have been. It's a tricky thing when, when you're capable of perfection and you really strive for that. But this is the type of gymnast that can do it. Sometimes it works. Most of the time it works, just not today. One minor deduction and a little step off to the side on the dismount. I love what her mom, Kiana, says about her. She said she was born with muscles. She said, when we go to the park, everybody would say, like, whose baby is that on top of the jungle gym? She said, it's my daughter, and she's fine. <laughs> Look at this. Very difficult switch ring. That is just a beautiful picture in the air. Very difficult, just lost a little bit there after the beat jump. And watch this, normally she nails it cold. Just a little lean to the right. They will have one more performer on beam, that will be Peng Peng Lee, but the Sooners are putting a little extra pressure on themselves. After Evie Schofer's 9-6-7-5, Anastasia Webb score is in a 9-7. So they're already going to count the 9-7 for sure. Jackson and Nichols will wrap it up for the Sooners here. Very powerful half and half out for the first pass. Oklahoma shows great difficulty in those opening tumbling runs. Nice combination pass. is all about strength, power, intensity, a little lightness there.
This program places such great emphasis on the details. And really striving to perfect everything they're capable of perfecting. High pike to, oh no. Came up a little bit short. She's had a little sore ankle that started last week on that landing for the pike double back. So I think she went into it just a little gingerly. Looked like she tweaked it last week on that pike double at the end of the floor routine. This pass is just amazing. Totally open, no grab of the legs at all. Full twisting double back. But right here, I think she just was holding back just a little bit, trying to protect that ankle, that ankle and landing with your chest down is a deduction. And of course the lunge forward. Let's go down to Holly Rowe. Well, you can get the anticipation when Peng Peng takes the beam right now. The entire student section, they call it the Bruin Den. They all just got up on their feet. They cannot wait to see her attack this beam routine. Tied for first in the country on beam this week. <laughs> what gorgeous flares. No one does them quite like Peng, and very few gymnasts do that at all. Flares are called Honma flares, invented by a former Canadian gymnast, just like Peng Peng, and a former UCLA gymnast, Leah Homa. I love that she holds absolutely nothing back. And this is when you just see that, that spirit come out of her. I mean, who looks out <laughs> and connects with the audience on Balance Beam? Well, Peng does. And all this is difficult, by the way. If I need to remind you, she does extremely difficult gymnastics she on balance beam. She said last week she was kind of up there clowning around and she kind of forgot her choreography, <laughs> so she just made up some stuff. <laughs> There's nice her piece side. She said she was going to do that if she had a good routine going. Let's see if she can finish it. Oh. Boom! Oh there my. it is! Peace <laughs> sign, double peace sign! <laughs> They are going to demand 10. Uh, <laughs> they're expecting 8,000 people here, and there's a lot of people on their feet saying, give us a 10. I, I've run out of superlatives for this gymnast on this apparatus. Double turn. As I said, everything is so difficult and done with such ease and joy. <laughs> she just looks like she's up there having fun. And she's coming after the 985 from Kyla Ross. Maggie Nichols will finish it up for the Sooners on the floor. AJ Jackson's score is in 9825. So three less than great routines for the Sooners on floor. And the score is in. They got what they wanted. It's a 10 for Pang Pang Lee. And Maggie Nichols has to stay focused on what she has to do. And Maggie Nichols can do just that. She'll use all that energy to fuel her fire. Because she can be equally. She was in the exquisite. same situation last week when she was on bars and over on vault. Alex McMurtry from Florida scored a 10. That score came in while Nichols was on the bar. I'm sure she's trying to prance her way right to a 10-0, and she can really perform the heck out of this routine. The Sooners had a three-tenth of a point lead coming into this event, and they have squandered it a bit. If Nichols could get a 10, they would hang on to the lead. A 9-9-7-5 would tie it with the Bruins now. I know what's going through her mind here. Double pike, nailed it. How about that? I'll see yours and I'll raise you. I mean, that was just fantastic gymnastics, back to back, I love it. She can dial in landing so well, and I love the, how she steps out of that front layout. Just something a little different, and she just zeroed in on a perfect landing for the, the final pass. Sooners have only one nine nine in floor, and that was Brenna Dowles. The crowd is going crazy here because we're set for the fourth and final rotation. Maggie Nichols gets a 9-9-7-5, so wouldn't you know it, we are tied going into the fourth and final rotation here at Pauley Pavilion.
All right, let's go down to Holly Rowe. Well, Ping, you are now tied going into the final rotation, in part because of that amazing Thank 10 you. you just threw up. You threw the peace sign. At what point did you know this routine was peace out? Oh, my gosh. I knew From the beginning, I just stared into Jordan's eyes. She was standing, standing right across from me, and I was so nervous. I was like, hey, I need to calm down. So I just looked in her eyes. It just put me at ease. And every time I felt nervous on beam, I just breathed really deeply, and I was like, I need to throw this peace sign because my friend is visiting from Canada, and I told him I'd do it for him. So I was like, I just got to be calm and just have fun with the dance, and that's that's all I wanted to do. You've had tens on that apparatus before, but what is it like when the ten goes up and this crowd goes wild? Oh, I've never had a ten on beam and at home before, and just to know that they were with me during my beam routine was like the most coolest feeling and the most um, heartwarming feeling ever. So I'm just really thankful that everyone came out on Super Bowl Sunday, and I'm, I'm just super happy right now. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you. It is tied, folks, and Peng Peng Lee, a perfect day, starting with her singing of the national anthem, and for her, a 10 on the beam. It's tied going into the final rotation. You're not going to want to miss the end of this one, folks. Stay with us. How about this one, folks? It's tied going into the fourth and final rotation, and much of that is because of this amazing gymnast, world and Olympic champion, Kyla Ross. Look at her scores today, and look at the accolades that this young lady has amassed during her career, Kathy. What hasn't she done? Olympic gold medalist on the national team and led the U.S. so often with her skills, her leadership, it's just been wonderful. And then comes to NCAA gymnastics and has incredible, incredible performances. And we talked with her about her transition from elite to collegiate gymnastics at UCLA. I think going out and competing has always been a love of mine in, the, in this sport. So I think just being on that Olympic level, um, it's a little bit more individualized, but we still were competing and representing the U.S. We're to now come here and be part of such a huge team of more than 20 girls. Um, it's just a lot of fun to be able to go out and know that you're doing this for all your teammates and it's just so much fun to be out there every meet. You really have to train your mind to, to know that it's for a greater cause for your teammates. So I think this year I've really been able to enjoy that more and to show that in, in more of like a fun side of my gymnastics. Kyla is one of the rare gymnasts. She took a year off before entering college, and she said last year I just didn't feel like I was in good enough shape. So after one week after the NCAA championships, she got back in the gym. She said, I'm in the best shape of my life, and that is showing third in the nation in the all-around. Kyla Ross has come back better and than ever. When we come back, the fourth rotation, we are tied. Let's see if it's UCLA or Oklahoma coming out on top. beyond words and Peng Peng Lee what an, a, an amazing talent she is but the ice water in her veins to go along with the free spirit it's money so the stage is set on a very special day here in Westwood and we'll talk more about that later on but it is unbelievable as we come down to the final rotation. The Sooners on the beam. Stephanie Couture will lead them off. Now, the Sooners have traditionally been spectacular on this event under pressure. Bart, they can take it to any team in the nation on this event. They are so well-trained, well-prepared to handle any given situation, but an immense amount of pressure. We saw them perform incredibly well against Florida in that tight, competition last week, two weeks ago. 
Holly Rowe mentioned that uh, 11 of the 24 routines for the Sooners are new. In fact, there's some people you normally see. You see Chase Caps, Charity Jones. There were graduates now. Uh, Natalie Brown normally on the team has an injury and not competing in the lineup. So at least half of the lineup on beam for the Sooners is new this year. And you would never know it. It's as if they did tag team. They just touched out and the next one came in and is performing just the way we expect to see Oklahoma on beam. Precise, aggressive, great routines with plenty of difficulty. Couture, the senior from Phoenix, Arizona. Second team All-American on this event. And so far, this is an excellent lead-off routine for Oklahoma. And a gainer full off the end. What a fun dismount, and well done, too. Important moment for the Sooners. That lead-off performance on beam did not look shaky. This is such a cool dismount. Just throws herself off the end of the beam and adds a little full twist there before sticking the landing. Talk about how tight this competition is. UCLA was leading after the first rotation by 25,000. Then the Sooners after the second rotation by three tenths. But the Sooners squandered their lead on floor. And that brings us to an all tied up as we go into the last event. Gracie Kramer now, the sophomore from San Clemente, California, will lead it off for the Bruins here. And UCLA started this event with their usual dance party during the warm-ups. Gets the energy up, gets the crowd going. Now they need to control these landings, stay in bounds. Wow, Stephanie Couture's score on Bean is in. It's a 9.95 to start off that rotation. Wow. Beautiful lift on the back, one and a half. Layout so far. This is the best routine I have seen her do. Got to get those legs together at the end of those jumps on the landing, but other than that, she is just right on. Coach Kindler says that Kramer has that quality that you just can't teach. Some people are performers and some aren't, but she certainly is. Now really choreographed so perfectly for them to give them the confidence to perform all out. This could be a terrific routine for them. Excellent finish. We may see more difficulty, but I tell you what, she did her job. Hit those landings, stayed in bounds, and performed the heck out of that routine. So some of the routines, we look for those E passes, the most difficult, just like that double twist right into a punch front. And the strong finish here with a front one and a half twist into a straddle jump. Again, fighting for every tenth of a point there, not giving anything away. Oh, this is close. The leadoff score for the Sooners on beam, 995 for Stephanie Couture. And that brings up Bree Showers. Watch the choreography and the composition of these routines. Such attention to detail. And nothing is stock, nothing is like everybody else does in college. They really strive for that. Scores in for Kramer on floor, 9875. Love how they just completely line themselves up and almost pause in that square position, aggressively attacking the landing, and then hit the end pose. Oh, I love that comp that composite. Easy for me to say, combination, <laughs> full turns. Fortunately, she did it better than I said it. <laughs> yeah, that's a combination she likes to go for, but she's not always in the proper position to go for it. No, it's nice to see. Some of these combinations earn them the bonus points they need to elevate their start value score so that they're all coming from a 10-0. They have to hit those combinations perfectly to get credit. Oh, wow, nice. that was a great dismount. Cartwheel right into the gainer full. Here's a young lady that basically hadn't competed in about four years because of her club injuries. And then when she came to college, she's the one who had that broken forearm. 
finish this routine. So strong, perfectly pointed toes and a great landing. And imagine what that score will be. Stephanie Couture, who led them off, had a 9-9-5. Mia Dennis on the floor now for UCLA. 9-8-7-5 was the score for Kramer. Dennis, the freshman, three years on the U.S. national team. She'll interrupt this uh, floor choreography with an E-pass right here. Ravian double, oh, bent her legs a little too much on that landing, didn't quite absorb it. Kept it in bounds. Perfectly, but kept it in bounds, that's huge. Front full to front layout. Three shower score for Oklahoma on beam just came in. It's a 9-9-7-5 in the second spot for OU. Oh, she just spelled out her name. <laughs> Mia. With a wand, I think. Heard a little get it girl from behind me here. <laughs> powering her on into this last tumbling run. Tuck double back, nice position on the landing, chest up. Yay. We got a competition going here. <laughs> Opens with a terrific Arabian double, but unfortunately the legs Kind of buckled a little bit, but she managed to keep it in bounds. They'll take a little deduction for the step, but that perfect landing. Back to the beam now for the Sooners. Their first two scores, 995 and 997 by. And that brings up Carly Woodard, who herself is ranked fourth in the country on beam this week. And in her only her second collegiate meet against Florida, high intensity meet, as a freshman, went 9.95. Freshman from Overlark, Overland Park, Kansas. And she doesn't just handle the pressure, she handles it with such beauty and poise. Back over on floor for UCLA, Nia Dennis's score is in. It's the second straight 9.875 for the Bruins. Oh no. Okay, big deduction. Anytime you have to correct your balance by lifting your leg up off the balance beam in that high, that will be a sizable deduction. She made it look pretty. Unfortunately, again, again, oh, and off on that one. The Sooners got off to an incredible start on this event. And you know what I love here? Okay, the UCLA crowd just applauded to get her back up on the beam. Give her support. I love to see that in this sport. This is not easy. We don't always see that sentiment in other gyms around the country, Kathy, do we? No, I love to see that encouragement and this appreciation for not just the talent and all the hard work that goes into it, but for handling the pressure with such beauty and poise. And I know she's she's off. She's definitely off, but they're encouraging her and finish strong. Freshman under enormous pressure. This meet was tied coming into this rotation. Now separated by a tenth of a point, the Sooners and the Bruins. And a reminder to everyone as she finishes so strong that they can drop one low score. So of course, this is the routine they will want to drop. She just got a little bit off when the pressure builds. It's very, very hard to contain that. She was off on the takeoff. She fought hard to keep it on, but as she went into it, she was off to the left, and she lands on the edge of the beam and just cannot pull it back. We go back to the floor now for UCLA, Kyla Ross. We didn't see her much in the floor lineup last year until the end of the season. So great to see her here in the third spot for the Bruins. Whip back to tuck double. Oh my <laughs> gosh. It's as if she just set herself down so gently after such a powerful tumbling pass. We 
talked to Val Condos about the theme behind the choreography, and she says this particular theme is she's a female 007 in a casino. Back when it had the front layout, very few gymnasts can finesse everything so beautifully. Down to Holly Rowe. Well, we told you about this. She thought she wasn't in good enough shape last year. She said where that showed up was on the floor. She said, I just wasn't explosive enough. But you can see after that second pass, the explosion is back in her floor routine. That's because of such great shape that she's in. And she's like, that's when I know I'm at my best form is when I'm exploding off the apparatus. I mentioned the storyline that Belle tries to bake into these routines. And she says, really, it doesn't really matter what the storyline is. But the point is, I want them to think about something other than trying to be perfect to take the pressure off. But perfection often oh takes over. She Whoa. stayed so calm, cool, and collected and waited <laughs> for that landing perfectly. Most less experienced gymnasts would have buckled on that landing. That you, is the mark of a champion. You and I know it, Bart, but wow, did she handle it perfectly. First pass, whip back, that's the back handspring with no hands, right into a perfect landing of the double back. And watch this, she just, she's working hard, but she's not showing it. Yes, a little deep knee bend, but no movement of the feet. <laughs> Mel Condos field approves, and she knows they got a close one here. Now, what a moment for the Sooners. 8-9-7-5 is the score for freshman Carly Wooder. That brings up Nicole Lehrman, the junior from Austin, Texas. This might be the most critical routine of the meet because they have to count five scores out of six. That means the next three routines have to be hit considering how close this is, Kathy. And it's critical, but it's also so creative, Bart. I'm glad we got to see the first part of that routine. Really shows the unique quality of her balance beam routine. Kyla Ross's score is in 9.875. That's the third one in a row for UCLA. We'll walk over slightly off to the side. That's your dance series. Connecting those two leaps together, one of the requirements for balance beam. Another requirement, an acrobatic series. Oh, that can't spin layout. I'm just seeing the nerves have just crept in a little bit. And it's the kind of thing where you can't second guess yourself. You gotta really attack and commit both in beginning the skill or the series and finishing it. Always finish. It's interesting because of those lights out scores in the first two performances. Yep. Yeah. Oh, good. She did a pretty good job of trying to keep those feet on the landing and just step into her salute to the judge. Everything was going so smoothly. Just a little bit rushed going into it. And you got to follow through and finish strong. Good fight here, though. Look at that. Just picks up that foot and then turns to salute the judge. Alicia Hano, the sophomore from San Gabriel, California now. Three scores in a row for the Bruins of 9-8-7-5. Opens with a big double layout. for Oklahoma's Nicole Lehrman in 9.85. Wow, this is gonna be close. Hanna was limited to one event last week at the Metroplex Challenge because of the flu. with a pike double back, good difficulty, and a great landing. 
Wow. They are using the energy from their fans, from this crowd, and it has powered an amazing floor rotation. Kathy, you got to admit, you know, for the UCLA Bruins, there's many times that they're not quite in this kind of condition in the mid-season, but I think you're right. The crowd is helping inspire them on. And from start to finish, just hyper-focused on all these landings. <laughs> Peng Peng Lee did her part with her perfect 10 on beam. Now she's cheering on the sidelines. Oh, her score is in a 10. And while they're celebrating, Anastasia Webb has to go on the beam for the Sooners after Lehrman's 9-8-5. And she can be so cool here. Our third 10 of the night in Pauly Pavilion. Excellent focus, concentration, because this place has gone wild around her. Nice combination, the cat leap into the front area, being very, very aggressive. Her best score today was on bars in 9-8, but she's had two subpar performances. 9-2-5 on vault where she sat down, and floor only a 9-7. So but this is all about team gymnastics. What she's used to. And this is what a good team does. They have each other's back. When there are little mistakes, you rally. She came up big oh, in this yes. spot. Well done for the freshman. So Excellent. the Sooners now have four of five routines hit, but they'll need one more. And that, of course, will come from Maggie Nichols. So proud of this young lady for coming up in such a pressure situation and handling it with such poise and aggressive tenacity. Good for her. Let's go down to Holly Rose. Well, coming up on floor now is Caitlin Ohashi for UCLA. She has changed one of her passes this week. She said, last week I wasn't feeling well. I've been a little depleted after Christmas. And so she has changed her last pass. It'll be a little bit different. Front handspring, front full, front and a half, split to the ground. She said she just wasn't doing the double as well as she could. <laughs> Actually, she went back to the double layout. Look at there. Good for her, a huge double layout. She learned that here in college. How wonderful. Hey, the score for the Sooners came in on B. Anastasia Webb scores a perfect 10. Our fourth perfect 10 tonight here at Pauley Pavilion. Are you kidding me? I think Val told me, uh, think of her as the Jackson Six, the sixth member of the Jackson Five. She loves <laughs> to get out there and dance. Hence the music. Oh, nice. Look at that. I love that finish. <laughs> Good for her. What a performance. They are on their feet in Pauley Pavilion. We've already seen four tens, and that just doesn't seem like enough for this crowd. What an event. Oh, oh. It's in. Ohashi gets her ten. The fifth 10 of the day in this blockbuster matchup. Look at that. People going crazy and standing over at the beam for the Oklahoma Sooners is Maggie Nichols, who has to wrap it up. Oklahoma, the way I see it, has a very slight lead. And she's coming after a 10 of their own, Anastasia Webb. Nichols typically is money on beam. Normally you wouldn't want this situation for yourself, the kind of pressure she must feel on beam, but this is a gymnast who can not only handle it, she embraces it. 
So if Maggie Nichols can get a 9-9-7-5 right here, she can clinch it for the OU Sooners even before the final performance from UCLA on floor. A 9-9-7-5 would clinch it. And the person who knows that is possible more than anyone in this arena is Maggie Nichols. I don't know about you, but I'm holding my breath. Mm. Excellent work. What a thriller. The Sooners had a substantial lead, three tenths, squandered it a bit on floor. And now on the pressure-packed event, it's come to come down to this landing for Maggie Nichols if the Sooners will get enough. It's a one and a half twist. She can usually finesse these landings oh! perfectly. There it is. My goodness. Wow. We've already seen a 10 for her teammate, Anastasia Webb. I feel tears in my eyes. It's such a beautiful thing to see them go back and forth like this and handle such immense pressure with the support of their teammates and come up huge. I love it. And a 10 is in for Maggie Nichols. Four tens in a row. I'm not sure I've seen that in collegiate gymnastics competitions. So put this in perspective, Pauline trots, and I don't think she knows this, but she would need more than a perfect 10 for UCLA to win this meet. Open with a full end. Trots the freshman. Joy, the story that she tells. She is an alien trying to get back home. That was what the scream was. She's now deciding she loves it here and wants to stay. She put it all out there on the floor, fought through every tumbling pass. What a thrilling finish to this mid-season dual meet between the number one and the number four team in the country. I'm sorry, either team has to lose this because they've both done such a tremendous job. The two best matchups of the year, we got to see him, Kathy. We were at Florida when Oklahoma was edged out. And now we're here at UCLA. And Florida, Oklahoma, UCLA, LSU are four teams that expect to contend for that national championship. So her score is in. It's a 9-9-2-5. And we have a final score. Oklahoma, by one-tenth of a point, beats the Bruins here at UCLA. And look at the respect between these two coaches. And from these two teams. And now, time for a very special presentation. Let's go down to Miss Val. you're amazing Oklahoma you're amazing thank you for coming out please join me in congratulating the Oklahoma head coach KJ Kindler thank you you guys were an amazing crowd can I just say that give yourselves a round of applause
The power and strength of women has been more evident in the past few weeks than ever before. We are here to rise together as one. Please enjoy this video tribute to the amazing army of women. I'm Jordan Weaver, Olympian and UCLA Gymnastics Volunteer Assistant Coach. Last month, I, along with 155 other survivors, traveled to a courthouse in Lansing, Michigan to share our story and confront our abuser. Today we wear teal to honor the incredible army of women who are using their voices to change the world and the sport that unites us all for the better. Every single one of you has inspired us with your bravery, your poise, and your dedication to the fight for justice. Thank you for going to battle on behalf of us all and for showing that we are stronger together. Your words are finally being heard. And we stand by you. We stand by you. We stand by you every step of the way. We would like to thank some members of our Bruin and Suna families who have bravely spoken out. We appreciate you. We support you. We stand with you. We hear you. I'm here today with all these other women, not victims, but survivors. And now I can finally say that I'm truly proud of myself for something I've done relating to my elite gymnastics career. And I will continue to stay strong knowing I have a bright future ahead of me. We have a voice now. We have the power now. No one will forget how us women have gotten the strength to change the trajectory of abuse in the sport of gymnastics. Time is up. No longer. You often hear that becoming a parent changes everything. Becoming a mother has made me realize that I would do anything to protect my child. Last March, I traveled to Washington, D.C., along with some of my fellow survivors, and met with Senator Dianne Feinstein to tell her my story. We must ensure that legal steps are made to prevent anything of this nature and magnitude from happening again. There is another way, a healthy and supportive way to make champions. Even though I'm a victim, I do not and will not live my life as one. Despite being abused, I worked so hard and managed to achieve my goal. I am an Olympian, but I want everyone, especially the media, to know that despite my athletic achievements, I am one of over 140 women and survivors whose story is important. I am making the decision to tell my traumatic story and hope to join the forces of my friends and teammates to bring about true change. I have come to the realization that my voice now can be heard and have influence, and I will strive to ensure the safety of young athletes who have big dreams just like mine. Thank you. Thank you. Your strength is inspiring. We appreciate you. You are making a difference. We are stronger because of you. Thank you for showing that we are stronger together. Together we rise. Together we rise. Together we rise. Join me in saying thank you to four of these survivors that have spoken out so strongly. Jamie Dancher. The amazing Maggie Nichols. Jeanette Antolin. Give it up for Maddie Rose Larson. and Jordan Weber. Together we are stronger. Together we rise. We all want to thank Miss Val and KJ Kindler for their leadership here. The healing process will continue. And special congratulations. These young ladies are retaking the power back over abusers. KJ, I know you've been an important advocate for this all along. Well, I'm sitting here with tears in my eyes as a gymnast, an Olympian, now as a mother. And where there was pain, I now see power. I'm so proud of all of these young women. And all that is great about gymnastics and our sport is within them. And we move forward together. So a powerful day on many levels.
Not only was it a day of advocacy and a day of unity, but also a day of incredible gymnastics competition. Six perfect tens, including four of the last five athletes in the competition. Take a look at this, Kathy. What, what a perfect competition to come up with your best in. Precision, perfection, joy, all wrapped up in these incredible performances. And they were rewarded with perfect tens. This is a night they will never, ever forget. None of us will. Spectacular finish, what a meet. And that 10 for Maggie Nichols. Speaking of Maggie Nichols, Holly Rowe is with her now. Well, Maggie, for the second week in a row, your team has gone on the road in incredible, difficult environments and come out with a win today. You had to have a 10 to get it done. What was that like for you? Um, well, I just wanted to do it for my team. We've been working so hard in the gym. We look really strong. So I just want to go out there and hit my routine like I do in training and just to do it for my team. With so many new faces having to compete for your team this year, what does this kind of environment do to get you better quickly? Yeah, we have had some injuries with the upperclassmen, so um, our freshmen have done an amazing job stepping in. So we've just been going in the gym, um, doing a lot of pressure sets, and they've really handled it well, so I'm really proud of them. What was it like to close out the night tonight with this crowd behind you and everyone supporting uh, the, the victims and everything that's gone on? I can't even describe it. I'm so thankful. It was so amazing, and I just can't thank everyone here enough. And you know, it's really emotional, but it was so amazing, and I'm, I'm so blessed to have all these girls and all this whole crowd behind me. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Holly and Maggie. Wow, this competition lived up to its hype as a gymnastics meet. And of course, the tribute to the heroic Survivor Sisters made it even more impactful. What a thriller here in Westwood. Coming up next, 30 for 30, Nature Boy. Woo! For Holly Rowe, Kathy Johnson-Clark, and our entire crew, I'm Bart Connor. So long from Los Angeles.